What's up guys and thank you for joining for another battle style video with me, Skyrender. And today we are on episode 3, which is going to be about the predictor playstyle. The predictor playstyle is a very very advanced type of playstyle. We have talked about how predictions are very intuitive, very important in a metagame. A predictor playstyle is based on predictions, but are more aggressive. That is that they don't try to see the next move, they are much more complex. Usually, they do in the double switches, you get even the higher pressure on. They don't really, like, um, settle for the neutral damage. They want the high roll damage roll here. And that's why they are such a blast to watch, because they are such a good pre predictive battlers, obviously. And the reason I wanted to try out that this is a very, very complex style is because very, 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 very... Many people try this style out and actually fail miserably because it is not as simple as predicting what the next switching is. It is to think above everything else. Usually, a lot of trickster players usually fall into this category later on where they just stop scouting and just get this very defined role where they usually think or have a good grasp on what the opponent's team build are and just by that going to be even more aggressive and have a clear view on what they want their opponent to become during the battle. A very good example of this is when a predictor player going against a team that they know exactly which one are the walls, which one are the hyper-offensive, which one is going to be the offensive sweepers, obviously, and uh, by default trying to get down the walls first. And doing this by bringing their hyper-offensive poke very often, not to attack, just to bait. And it usually do a double switch to its uh, wall breaker to get that high damage roll and do that as often as possible until the wall is either fainted or at such a low HP that it can't recover or come back. This is the essence and the whole premise of being a predictor player. It is about forcing the opponent to play defensively, you know, putting them on, in a, uncomfortable positions and just being very, very aggressive. And with all that said though, let's actually watch the pro and cons of this type of playstyle and also if there are any direct counters for this type of teams. Uh, like I said, they are very very complex and are very hard to pull off, but if you're able to, then you're going to have a very easy time here in the metagame. So the main perk of these type of players are that they easily get the upper hand. What I mean by that is that they are actually going to rely on that, that they, their hyper-offensive playstyle and their prediction playstyle is going to bring you to a pulp where you're going to play very, very safely and do the safe predictions, you know, to don't take as much damage. They are actually going to feed on that. And what I mean by feeding is that they do want you to play like that because that will make it much easier for them to do the right prediction. It makes you an easy prey. Uh, usually, when they know that a player has a very, very right predictable uh, tendencies, uh, they're actually going to start setting up against the four switchings. What I mean by that is that they usually bring the hyper offensive threat only to set up because they know the opponent is going to switch out to something that's going to soak the damage and by that be in a much, much better position. So they don't really need any defensive plays because they are actually relying on that their hyper offensive switchings are going to be just enough to not make their opponent make a move. It's actually very, very impressive watching this because they usually don't bring too many defensive posts into a team because they don't really need it. They just need the damage roll to keep going. The only defensive like playstyle that they got is definitely their only sack place. That is that when they need something to soak damage or, you know, faint in battle, they're usually going to bring the posts that are not needed anymore and just sack them and then switch in what is necessary to put the, put the pressure on yet again. These type of battlers usually only live around 20-25 turns in, and that is that they easily win well beyond that. They can actually have won 10 turns in because they got the predictions right and are in a lead of 6-3. Six, six uh, it's very, very common. It's very, very annoying, and you can't really turn that one around. And you can't really try to outpredict them. What I mean by that is if your team aren't built as offensively as a predictive player is, you will fail miserably and try to outpredict them. You are much more trying to survive this type of players and you let the turns go than trying to be as aggressive and try to win them into their own game, which you sadly cannot. So now that I got you prepared for what the pros for this type of teams are, which is are a lot of pros for you actually playing like this, it requires a lot of uh, the player of knowing a lot before a game, but 
the reward is so high and it's such a high risk place usually do high rewards but our problems with our place with this type of place all and the first problem is that you will actually become your own worst enemy what do i mean by that i mean if your protection doesn't go down that you are usually the one that's going to get the retaliate damage right back at you and um, being like a predictive playstyle means you don't have any defensive capabilities, which also means you can't do too many failed predictions. So usually this will always backfire and it can actually mean a loss if you do the wrong predictions at the wrong time. And this type of player usually gets very, very frustrated of uh, not original sets. What I mean by original sets is Smogon sets, you know, this Pokemon should be this, or this Pokemon should be that. If they aren't, if uh, let's say a hyper offensive poke now is a special defensive uh, sweeper for some reason, it might not be doing as much damage, but it takes the predictor player off guard and do, does the wrong switching, and you usually get the high damage roll on that, and that is very, very hard to deal with. And a very, very, very good thing to keep on track, some of you could play against play like this, is that this team falls apart rather early. What I mean by that is that this type of playstyle are not built to actually you know doing the defensive play is not built for stalling it's built for sweeping it's built for taking on the threats early on just picking out everything that needs to be picked out for the team to sweep easily and uh, if this team survives to uh, 25 turns ish uh, an opponent has approximately the same amount of pokemon left they are very likely to lose because that means that uh, the opponent has the stally pokes left to actually soak whatever is necessary because the predictor player has kind of revealed its essence and are much more likely to do a misprediction in late game than it is in early game. And that brings me to the last topic on this uh, con list, that is that they, this type of player really gamble a lot, and they gamble a lot in late game. And what I mean by gamble is that they are already revealed that they are predictor players, so when they do a prediction is wrong, and uh, the retaliated damage is much greater, that is a gamble. And these type of teams can't really do the safe plays because they usually don't have the brawn or defensive capabilities to stay out that long. So they really need to soak with the right Pokemon. And if they can't do that late game, then they're very, very likely to lose. And that is also how you win against these type of players. You need to try to stay alive. Never challenge them in the prediction game, never play defensively enough, just don't fall into the wrong predictions. Rather stay in, you know, trying to soak whatever you can and retaliate, force them to don't force you to switch. If it seems kind of obvious for you that you're going to switch out, don't do it. Because they, these guys never do the safe plays, they usually just predict you to do a switch in that will put them in a much better position. So keep that in mind. And now we're all are actually to our gamer review. Today we're going to review one of the coolest battlers that are around here on uh, YouTube really, and that is gonna be Pietro or Phoenix Master One. He is probably the best predictor players uh, in, <laughs> well, in on YouTube really. And it's an honor for me to uh, get him to review him. He's a very, very, very aggressive player. And uh, yeah, check out the channel after this review. So, you know, this is one of the few instances where I just, I can't find a word to describe how good a player like Pietro is. Most of you guys should know him by now. If you don't do it, then, you know, what? what is wrong with you? Really? You don't know about this guy? He's an Italian player. I think he's 17 years old. He's very, very good at predictions. He's a very, very aggressive player. And he's very, very, a very smart player, to say the least. And what I mean by smart is that he's very, very calm in his battle. He rarely does the mispredictions. He's very good at not trying to think too much. That is, that he is very good at baiting the opponent instead of actually trying to uh, predict him. Um, very, very impressive dis display. We're going to talk a little about his basic stats and his basic playstyle to get him more in touch with uh, what type of player he really is. 
So yeah, as a Brito player, I'm definitely giving this guy an S. I think he's the best on YouTube. I really think that uh, his type of play style is something that he has uh, perfected. And I think a lot of players really want to play just like him. But it's not that easy. And I think he's doing this so good. And uh, what I mean while giving an S is because he has actually defined this type of play style where you don't... How to put it? You don't scout at all, you just do. And that is most definitely his strategy. He just do it. He gets an idea on what the opponent wants to do and just go at it. Just do the right predictions, do the double switch when it's needs to, and do the high damage roll when it needs to. And also, he knows when to stay in. He knows when he's playing obvious. So he's really getting to the head against his opponents and doing just great, really. And I'm also going to give him a hyper offensive H because I do believe that his predictive playstyle in combination with his aggressive playstyle really, really pays off. He usually really just needs to do the high damage roll early on and just keep getting the pressure. He doesn't bring any defensive posts. He's, he might bring one, two tops, uh, but they usually are made to be offensive too. And he just keeps doing damage. There is really no way of stopping him. You can't go around it. If you know, get get into his head and know what he's all about. He's still an underdog player. I was gonna give that one a B. And for you that are new to my battle style video, underdog playstyle is basically where you give away a false safety. A false safety that is that you're sacking a poke that wasn't supposed to be sacked, or you would do the wrong move to you know just bait the opponent to stay in the next time the face of it to do the uh, super effective damage. Underdog playstyle it really works very good at late game, and I think Pietro does this really well because when he has to stay around for more than 25 turns, he usually does some weird plays to actually get the opponent to feel, how to put it, not safe, but they get this false impression that they are in a good position, only to see Pietro bring in something original and doing a very, very high damage roll and, you know, doing that prediction hyperoffensive all over again. And usually that is a nail in the coffin for a late game sweep. Uh, it's a very impressive display. He does this very often in his longer videos. And it looks really cool. I think he failed once or twice. But, you know, that is... He has some good uh, statistics on this. And I really don't think any other player can dust this, dust this as well as he does. So, yeah. Now actually, let's actually look at his overall stats. Pietro is overall a very, very balanced player, uh, well above average, uh, but very, very balanced. I think the only thing he's lacking is his defensive capabilities, because he doesn't need them. His playstyle is so wide open for him to do other stuff than playing defensively, that he doesn't really need to have a defensive play or defensive tactics. Uh, when it comes to his offensive... One thing worth mentioning is that it comes a lot of with him trying to keep on that pressure, really. And the pressure play goes hand in hand with his type of uh, prediction plays, which means that he is just very good at keeping the damage rolling, really. So he is basically as good as a hyper offensive player, but has that prediction play style that really makes him very tough to deal with because he can get the easy lead very easy and just doesn't let up he usually never lose if he gets an easy lead uh he really lose this lead which is just something to keep in mind while he like i said his defensive play style is very bad uh his sack play is still top notch uh the sack play for him is actually his kind of his defensive play style he usually only sack pokemon that are by default um, worthless for the rest of the game uh, and sacking the pokes just to get a new uh, hyper offensive poke out to keep the damage rolling um, very very cool to see and i think if you're gonna sack play this is how you do it you sack the posts that are not needed for a battle whether or not they have good hp or not if they're not needed take them away there is no reason to have them there and pietro knows exactly how to do that and that is where his element of surprise really comes into because he usually have one or two posts that are how to put it, they are not the original set. They are usually the opposite set of what are supposed to be. And by that, you know, doing, forcing the opponent to um, do the misprediction and bring the wrong poke in to do an even higher damage roll. So he has this one intuitive, which makes it really, really cool. He also has this, like, complete thought about what his team should be all about. And that is where the originality of his playstyle comes in. 
But being that he really doesn't need to play defensively, there's no real reason for him to actually play, obviously, defensive. So I don't see that face go moving <laughs> anytime soon. And I don't see this guy losing anytime soon. He is definitely one of the best guys on YouTube. I do recommend everybody that hasn't checked him out to do so. But I'm very sure most of you guys already did because this guy is probably one of the best ones in the business, to be really, really honest here. Um, and yeah, this will basically be my review of uh, Phoenix Mass 1 and my talk about um, battle style with uh, Predictor Player. I hope you learned something today. Uh, make sure to actually comment here um, if you learned something, if there's something that you think I missed out here. Next week, we're going to talk about the Duelist playstyle. And that's going to be with Xenon 3120. Hopefully, he will join for a few comments. Uh, other than that, guys, thank you, know, as always, for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, make sure to leave a like. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And have a good day. All right, guys, bye.